Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing how to run your F Sharp and .NET project in Docker containers. Uh, why am I doing this? Well, I really like F Sharp. I've really been enjoying it um, over the past few weeks. Um, and I basically run everything in Docker containers uh, because it makes it much easier to develop with on multiple machines um, or to deploy it basically anywhere in the cloud that runs containers, which is like anywhere. So. I thought this would be useful to kind of show you, especially if you're getting started with F Sharp and .NET. So the way that I'm gonna be doing this is first to lay out some prerequisites that you need to have if you wanna follow along here. Um, then I'm gonna show you how to actually get set up with a basic uh, F Sharp project. Uh, walk through the code that's required to actually containerize um, this F Sharp so you can kind of run it on your machine. Uh, and then finally show you how to run the container and then give it a quick demo to actually validate that everything I told you is actually correct. So to follow along at home, uh, the only thing that you really need is uh, the .NET SDK. Um, so this is gonna give us access to the .NET command, um, which is super useful for setting up new projects and actually interacting with your projects, like running it, building it, publishing it, um, everything like that. Uh, so if you don't have this, uh, don't worry, just go to the Microsoft site uh, here or Google it um, and should be pretty quick and easy to install. Now, once you actually have a .NET SDK on your machine, um, we can go ahead and create our first F Sharp project. So for this, we're just gonna be building a console application, um, which is basically the lightest weight application we can do, super simple, uh, basically just two files. Um, and that's just gonna keep this you know, tutorial very, very, very lean. So to create a console application, we're gonna be using that .NET command, which came with the .NET SDK, um, which is just here on the screen. So .NET new console dash lang F sharp. Uh, dash lang is really important here because if you don't put F sharp here, it will just create a C sharp project. And we don't want that because it, it won't work directly. Okay, so once your console application is created, it should look uh, something like this. Um, and so, here on the screen, uh, we've got the Explorer. There's really only two um, files here. So we have our fsproj, uh, which is here on the right. And basically this fsproj is just going to tell us everything that's required for this project to build correctly. So uh, we have this little item group with a compile that's saying like, hey, there's a program.fs file that I need. Um, and if we had any kind of dependencies here, it would also be listed here. Uh, if you are in the JavaScript kind of environment at all. This is basically the same as a package.json. Now the program.fs, this is basically our main file, our main function. Um, and the only thing that it has by default is a print uh, function here using printfn. And so when we run this, theoretically, it's going to print out um, hello from F sharp. And that's it. That's why we're using console application. It's really simple to understand and kind of get started with. Okay, so now that we have our F-sharp project uh, downloaded, now let's go ahead and containerize um, the F-sharp with a Docker. So the way that Docker works is basically you're gonna create a Docker file, um, and this is just gonna give all the instructions for Docker to build your project and create an output image of it that can be run basically anywhere. And so here's the file. Um, it is a bit of code. Uh, so uh, I have the code available here on my website for you to easily copy and paste. Um, we'll also be in the description uh, if this is you know too long to type in. Okay, I'm going to walk through the Docker file uh, line by line just so you kind of know what's happening. Um, but basically, there's two main sections. First is the build project section here at the top. And the second is the run project, um, which is where we're actually gonna run the builds and that's how we're gonna actually get the console application to run. So the first line here is basically pulling the official .NET SDK, which is that same thing that we downloaded on our machine for .NET, um, into our container. And this is gonna give us access to it. Uh, we're gonna change our directory to the slash source and then we're gonna copy that fsproj file into our container. Um, the reason we need that to do this is if you actually, actually add dependencies um, or anything uh, to your project later, we're actually gonna need to make sure those dependencies exist within our container. So we're gonna run .NET restore here, uh, which will actually install those dependencies. If you're in JavaScript land, this is basically the same as an NPM install. Now that we have all our dependencies, we can actually go ahead and uh, build our project together all into a usable package. Um, so we're gonna have this copy here, which is gonna copy everything that we have in our folder, which is all our source files and things like that. And then we're gonna run .NET publish here, uh, which is actually gonna take all of that and bundle it up into a package, 
Um, in this case, in .NET land, it's going to be a .dll. So this is the build step, and we should have an output DLL that we can run. And so now we're actually going to create a new container layer that's going to do the running. Uh, usually you'll see this in, in Docker files because um, the thing that's required to build it is going to be much larger and heavier and non-optimized for actually running it. So that's what we're doing here. We're pulling a new .NET um, image, which we'll be using to actually run this. Uh, it's a lighter weight, a bit more efficient and optimized one than the full SDK. Um, we're going to copy over everything that we built um, in the previous step. And then we're going to enter here with calling .NET on our .dll. And that's a Docker file. Um, again, if you want uh, this code, uh, it's available at this link here. Uh, so you can kind of copy and paste it into your uh, project. Um, you can just copy and paste it in the root domain of the project. And uh, it should be able to find everything um, in the folder. OK, one important note um, before you try to run this is that this .dll uh, needs to actually match the DLL uh, that gets output from our build step. Now, by default, this is just going to create a DLL that matches the FS proj name. So probably your project er, is not named uh, you know, this. So just change that here um, in your Docker file, and you should be good to go. OK. So we've got our full project. Um, we've got our uh, Docker file uh, defined. Now we actually need to try to run the container. So the command for this, um, I just kind of have it here, uh, is what I would recommend running. Um, basically, it's doing two things. First, it's building a container. Um, and it's doing this without tags, which we don't need to worry about right now. Um, and then it's saying, hey, once you have the hash um, from the build, pass it into a parameter or as a parameter to this Docker run function. And what this uh, Docker run function is going to do um, is it's going to actually run our container. And then the dash dash RM is going to remove um, any container that might exist. So this is useful so we're not just like polluting our local system with a bunch of containers that are no longer useful for us. Uh, the dash IT is not necessary for us, um, but if you actually were going to write a console application, you might want to have an interactive shell to like talk to it or something. So that's what it does. This is pretty common, but out of scope for us right now. Now, if we run this, um, theoretically, this will uh, print the output from our program.fs, which should just be hello from F sharp. So hopefully it does that um, when you run it, and you can try it for yourself. Um, but next, I'm just going to go through a quick demo uh, to kind of show you how the code works um, again, and prove that all of this actually works uh, as I told you it did. OK, here's my version of the project. Uh, there's a few extra files here because I've turned it into a GitHub project. Um, but the main files here are just the fs proj uh, that I told you about earlier, the program.fs, which is actually printing to the console, um, and then that Docker file that I showed you, uh, which is the exact same, uh, and again, available on the site to copy and paste. So. Here's the Docker command, and I'm just going to press Enter to run it. And hopefully, it will print out um, to our console. And there it is. I print it out as expected. And then I'm going to uncomment this and save it and run it again uh, to prove that this is actually the, the code that's actually running. And there it is. So hopefully, your container worked as expected. And this gives you a fully running F Sharp console application along with the Docker container to run it from anywhere. So the full source code, um, including the full console application and the Docker file, is available on my website at this link. Uh, I know it's kind of long, so I will also have it in the description for you to click. And if you're just getting started with F Sharp, if you're looking to build something more complicated with F Sharp, um, I do have a full stack F Sharp project boilerplate available at cloudc.xyz, which should get you started in the right direction. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.